Hi, on this short vlog we're going to talk about uh, UK domicile. Now there's a lot of Brits who obviously have spent their lives, um, potentially the majority of their lives, uh, working overseas, you know, be that China or, you know, whether you're here in China and you've worked in several other com uh, countries before or you came to China, you know, 10, 15 years ago and you believe that you are UK domicile. Now, it's not quite as simple as that. And I'm here with Andrew Dobson from QV Partners. Um, they are a independent specialist in cross-border uh, tax and estate planning. Um, Andrew knows about this subject, so I want to bring you in, Andrew, if I may. And, you know, so if, if a guy, uh, you know, got a British passport, didn't give that up, yeah. but as I say, he's been here maybe 10 years and thinks he's not UK domicile and therefore not subject to HMRC uh, IHT taxation. Yeah. Is that a good question? Yeah, yeah. so um, the basic misconception comes from the fact that once you're non-resident, then you don't pay income tax on the mm -hmm. income that you're generating uh, from earnings outside of the UK. You pay that locally. Mm -hmm. So your residence dictates the tax you pay on income. However, um, Domicility and inheritance tax are guided by different principles as far as HMRC are concerned. And it's based on the birthplace of your father. So if your father was born in the UK, then you are UK domicile of origin. And there are a number of different categories of domicile. So the first one is domicile of origin. Where was your father born and what is your... What, what is your... Uh, heritage, where is your homeland? And that's what the UK HMRC judge this domicile issue on. Mm -hmm. So the definition that you, UK HMRC use is where, which country have you originated from and where is your substantial connection? Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to change their domicile, they are able to do that, but they have to demonstrate that that substantial connection has been removed. Right, right. And then that has to, the substantial connection has to override the domicile of origin mm. that will always be there. Okay, so what, what sort of things would they need to do? So you touched on passport, bank accounts, property. You need to clear all contact with the UK, right. um, not just the amount of days that you spend in the country that you live in and mm. the amount of days that you return to the UK. So if you've got bank accounts in the UK, if you've got memberships in the UK, mm. if you plan to be buried in the UK, if your children are being educated in the UK, if you're going to return to the UK to retire, all of these things will mean that you cannot establish a domicile of choice outside of the UK. Right. So it's based on the weight of evidence and the body of evidence, mm. but and, it, and sometimes it needs to be clarified after somebody has passed away by HMRC who will look at all of the evidence. Right. So the more evidence that is in place in favour of that domicile of choice election, the better. But most people either will not be able to or won't have the inclination to yeah. change that domicile of choice because yeah. they see themselves as being British of origin and, right. and inherently British and that's okay. their substantial connection. Okay. Just to play, uh, you know, devil's advocate, if you like. Now, so say I am an expat, uh, obviously yeah, British expat, which uh, yeah, indeed, uh, been here ten years. Uh, I have a Chinese wife. I've got a couple of uh, children here. Um, I do have an investment property in UK. Yeah. Which um, let's say the rent is being paid into an offshore bank account. Okay. All right. But in the Isle of Man. Yeah. Okay, but I don't have anything else in the UK. I don't have, um, you know, parents have passed away, let's say. Yeah. Um, I don't have golf club memberships or any other memberships. You know, that's my only footprint, if you like, left behind. I've got, I've got a apartment in London that I rent out. Yeah. So my um, UK domicile. That all depends. Um, so we would look at the overall potential for you to return to the UK even after you've died potentially bury me here bury you here okay yeah, I'm fine. not going back yeah I love China fine do you consider yourself to be Chinese 
or do you consider yourself to be British? That's a difficult one to answer. Right. Now, some people, um, the, the really good example of somebody who could change their domicile of choice uh, would be somebody who is brought up in Australia, but that his parents were from the UK. He considers himself to be Australian. Right. It, I, I think it comes down to, do you consider yourself to be Australian or UK or Chinese? Mm -hmm. Do you consider your homeland to be China or the UK now? It doesn't necessarily have to follow that you consider yourself to be fully Chinese. You could consider this to be your homeland and you could accept all aspects of the culture here and you could want to remain and see out all of your days okay. here. Okay. So it is possible, even though culturally you're not Chinese, mm. it is possible to establish a domicile of choice in China. Right, right. But it needs to be very, very clear from right. all evidence from yes. a central perspective. Exactly. So that, I think that's my next question. Um, God forbid I got hit by an e-bike on the pavement tomorrow and I, a big problem I expired. Can be, can be. <laughs> Um, and I haven't taken any action to make my domicile of choice official. Yeah. I'm assuming my estate, my entire worldwide estate, would be subject to HMRC I think it taxation? Would, or? I think it would likely to be looked at mm -hmm. and uh, HMRC would HMRC would judge that that was the case because they had no evidence in favour of any other assumption. Mm -hmm. So your parents are born in the UK, mm -hmm. um, you've still got a UK passport, etc. And, and all of the evidence is in favour of the fact that you are UK domicile of origin right. and nothing has changed. Right. You need to make a statement with a lawyer, an affidavit with a lawyer, that who, the same lawyer that will be uh, executing your will and, and distributing your assets to beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. By definition, they will make a report to HMRC or any other tax authority in the world reporting your demise, and then they will s submit an inheritance tax return. Mm. At that point, they need to establish that no inheritance tax is due because your domicile of choice is here. So right. they will need the evidence at hand. If there's no evidence at hand, they will revert to domicile of origin. Mm. And so if I haven't taken that step, and let's say I've bought a house in Shanghai 10 years ago, which has obviously you know, escalated in value significantly. Let's say now it's worth 2 million US dollars equivalent. Yeah, it I'm, forms part of your UK estate. It forms so, part of your estate that is assessed to UK inheritance tax. You are domicile of origin in the UK. And if my spouse have no cash to settle that amount, they could potentially come and claw the House and force sell, sale. Sell, force, yeah, sell the property, pay wow. the tax. So these these issues are serious yeah. issues to right. be addressed. Right. Yeah. 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 There's no, no good burying your head. Absolutely not. And the, yeah, okay. Okay. And, and, and the ownership of property here is an interesting one. So you mm. need to ensure that you know the, the, that's structured in the right way from outset to help with that situation when the next generation or when the 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 the, the wife takes ownership, full ownership of that property. Right, right. If it was in her sole name, then no, no problem? Correct, because she wasn't okay. born in the UK, right. she's not got UK parents, potentially, mm -hmm. and therefore, you know, she won't be domicile of origin in the right. UK. Okay. So there are ways, different ways, different solutions, mm -hmm. many straightforward solutions, which could be simply taking a domicile of choice mm -hmm. and doing that in the right way, mm -hmm. or if that isn't something that somebody wants to or can consider because of other factors, you could then look at, look at inheritance tax structuring around yeah. assets, yeah. or structuring the ownership in the right way during somebody's lifetime. Okay. That's not as easy as it sounds either, so yeah, you need sure. to make sure that that's done in the correct way. Yeah, yeah, and so we're looking at potentially talking about things like um, trusts, Cunops, foundation, another blog on Cunops, pensions, etc. Right. Yeah, right. lots and lots of different structures that can be used yeah. that are effective, depending on what the individual's long-term objectives are mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent.
Excellent. Okay. Well, Andrew, thank you for coming along today. If anything uh, we've said, or Andrew said, not, not my questions per se, but uh, any of Andrew's knowledge that um, has struck, struck a chord, I should say, with you, then uh, please do get in touch. Uh, as I said at the beginning, Andrew's an ind independent specialist that uh, myself as an independent financial advisor would be able to access to bring into your holistic uh, financial plan which may include, you know, as we've spoken about today, sort of uh, estate planning and, uh, yeah, you know, don't bury your head in the sand if uh, you need to uh, take some action if you have not already to protect your own assets and those of your uh, family as part of your succession plan. So, the ways of contacting me coming up later on and um, obviously if you're watching this on YouTube, you can uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, add a comment below. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hi, thanks for watching. And if I've said something of interest to you and you'd like to reach out to me and perhaps have an initial conversation or indeed arrange a meeting, uh, you can do that in a couple of ways. Uh, one is to Google me and type in Phil Morris Wealth Management and find me on LinkedIn or indeed reach out to me on WeChat and the QR code is coming up right now.